Speaking about crazy and ridiculous, I want to play uh, some a series of clips, uh, which is from a CNN. Uh, Pierce Morgan uh, had uh, Michael Moore, uh, documentary liberal documentist, <laughs> discussing capitalism, and it's very interesting because first, uh, Michael Moore claims that yes, he's gotten rich in America, but not because of capitalism. The capitalism is still kind of is still evil. Hey, listen to how this starts up. But cut number three. Is capitalism in itself wrong? And the reason I ask you that, you're a very, very successful, very rich filmmaker, apart from everything else you do. In a mm. way, that is capitalism. I mean, you, you've got a business. Mm. Is it really? You have a company. Oh. Well, uh, isn't it in yeah, its purest really? sense, isn't it? Uh, what pure? There's nothing pure about capitalism. Is it not, though? I it's not capitalism. That's, uh, what is it? Uh, first of all, um, I do well. For a documentary filmmaker, I do mm. really well. I'm very blessed and, and fortunate uh, that people want to go see my movies. The only reason I do well is because so many millions want to go see my movies. If they didn't like the movies, they would go see them, and I probably wouldn't be sitting here. So um, but, but there I mean, you go. It- but but that's capitalism. That's not, in a way, capitalism. That is the very nature of capitalism. Michael Moore produces films that satisfy the demands of his audience who enjoys his films. He, they're entertained to the extent that they're willing to voluntarily spend their money to watch his films. So uh, Michael Moore gets rich by satisfying the desires of other people. He entertains other people, and as a reward, he gets rich. That is the very essence of what capitalism is about. What is he kidding? I mean, if this was a socialist country, what would happen is the minister of entertainment would be figuring out what documentaries are made, they would hire Michael Moore and tell him, this is the documentary you're going to produce, and it would produce it, and then people would be forced to watch it whether they were entertained or not. Uh, <laughs> this is the very essence of, of capitalism. The thing is, Michael Moore doesn't really understand what capitalism is, and he continues to prove that as the interview continues. Here's cut number four. When you say the word capitalism, you have to talk about it in its current sense. You can't talk about the old days or the way maybe, you know, the... the Adam Smith, the sort of old uh, capitalism. Well, America fundamentally built on a form of capitalist dream. I mean, the idea that you can come from nowhere. The as idea you do, that and, and you, you work, work hard and you, you prospered, yeah, all those and things. then everybody else prospered. And not only that, as you prospered, uh, the wealth was, was shared with your employees, with the government. Everybody had a piece of the pie. You, who started the business or invented the light bulb or whatever, you got a bigger piece of the pie. And you know what? Nobody cared because you invented the light bulb. That was a pretty cool thing. Yeah, exactly. You see, the problem is, and here I have a little sympathy for Michael Moore. He shows maybe a little bit more intelligence than people would give him credit for. See, he is calling what we have today capitalism. What we have today is not capitalism. It's crony capitalism. It's fascism. It's socialism. It is not the capitalism of Adam Smith. He is correct. But to say that capitalism is bad because the current uh, system is bad is, is, is disingenuous because we don't have capitalism. And really what Michael Moore is protesting is not capitalism, but what government has morphed it into through its intervention. Anyway, here's uh, some more of this exchange, uh, cut number five. Where did it go wrong? Well, it went wrong because people, first of all, we started rewarding people not for making things or inventing things. We didn't reward them for their idea or their labor anymore. We reward people for making money off money and moving money around and dividing up mortgages a thousand times over, selling it to China, and trying to figure out how can I make more money off this money and then make more money off that money. And it becomes this shell game that nobody ever knows really where the, where the actual cash is that we're, that we're spinning around here trying to make money off it. He's right. He's right about that. But why is this happening? How, how did we move away to production to an economy based on speculation? That's the Federal Reserve. That's cheap money. That, that's where this is coming from. Maybe Michael Moore really has a lot more with Ron Paul that he understands because the reason the economy is so screwed up, the reason we don't have capitalism anymore is because of the Federal Reserve, because big government has destroyed it. See, Michael Moore here is actually admitting that he likes capitalism only he doesn't think it is capitalism he thinks that what we had before is something else and that what we have now is capitalism no what we had before was capitalism the system that michael moore seems to like was capitalism the system that he detests is not 
It is crony capitalism. It is socialism, fascism, whatever kind of ism you want to put on it. But it is there because of the very big government and big government policies that Michael Moore actually supports. That's the big irony. The reason things are so screwed up is because Michael Moore is supporting the ideology that screwed them up and the people that screwed them up. Actually, we have some more of this, but we're going to have to hold off. I'm going to continue with the last clip of the Michael Moore uh, CNN interview because I think it is very, very uh, insightful uh, into uh, Michael Moore's thinking, and it shows that he's very confused, but beneath the confusion, there actually exists some understanding that's dying to come out. But let me play this final clip uh, that we hadn't got to. This is clip uh, number six. We got so lost. We have been so on the wrong path for quite some time now that the idea of capitalism, there's nothing wrong with you or me or anybody here uh, earning a dollar, working hard, being rewarded for that. Nobody's, nobody has ever been against that. We're against greed and we're against the, the fact that 1% could get nine slices of the pie and the other 99% are supposed to fight over the last slice. That is un American. That is not democracy. It's not Christian or Jewish or Buddhist or Muslim. None of the major religions, in fact, they all say it's probably one of the worst sins you could commit is to take such a large piece of the pie while others suffer. Okay, two points here. First of all, why is it that the pie has been divided in such an unequitable manner? Uh, It's not because of capitalism. Yes, in capitalism, clearly. Uh, People who work harder, who are more innovative, enjoy a bigger slice of the pie uh, than people who work not as hard and who are less motivated or less innovative. That's that's uh, how it's always been. But um, the benefits of capitalism generally flow more freely uh, to the poor and the middle class than we are experiencing today. But the reason that uh, the workers Uh, you know, the blue-collar workers are not benefiting as much today as they have in the past is not because of capitalism. It's because of a lack of capitalism. It's because we no longer have capitalism. That's really what Michael Moore is bemoaning, the death of capitalism. You know, because what he is calling capitalism today is not capitalism. It is the opposite of capitalism. To what he described, working hard, making a buck, that's capitalism. Uh, But what Wall Street is doing with government money uh, and the Federal Reserve's help is not capitalism. The government micromanaging business with regulations that punish small innovative companies and reward larger entrenched companies and protect them from competition, that's not capitalism. Capitalism is Capitalism is about competition. Now, one thing he also said was that he's against greed. There is nothing wrong with greed. You know, the problem is that government turns the greed into a problem because you, when you, when you, when you combine government with greed, that's when you have a problem. When you, when, when a private businessman is greedy, how does his greed hurt people? It doesn't. If, if you are an entrepreneur, and your sole purpose is to make money. If that's all you care about, right? you just want to make as much money for yourself because that's how greedy you are. How do you do it? Well, you have to figure out what the people want and give it to them. You have to figure out what products do the people desire and how can I make those products and make them cheaper and better than somebody else. And if you succeed in doing that, you will get rich. Now, in the process, you will benefit everybody else. That is the invisible hand that Adam Smith first introduced us to, and it is based on greed. The fact is, when people start thinking not about making money, but about other supposedly more noble things, like simply helping people, it generally backfires because they don't help as many people. The best way to help people is to find the most efficient way to utilize scarce resources to produce the optimal amount of goods that people actually want that improves their lives and raises their living standards. That greed is good. In that respect, Gordon Gekko was right. But when somebody can combine their greed with government regulation, government protection, central banking, then it doesn't work. And, of course, government encourages the wrong kind of greed because they have rules and regulations 
that take the risk away, that take the fear away. You know, one of the things that keeps greed in check, at least when it comes to speculative activity, is the fear of losing money. Right, yes, everybody wants to make more money, but they don't want to lose the money they already have. And so there is a balance between the two. The government tilts that balance when it comes in and guarantees something. It says, don't worry about the risk. We've got you covered. We've got your back. If you lose money, we'll bail you out. That is what encourages excessive risk-taking based on greed that the free market would have protected us from. Now, yes, are some people who are greedy committing crimes? Are there people who steal money as a result of greed? Yes. These are not businessmen. These are criminals. And crime is against the law, and it has certainly not been repealed. There is plenty of greed-motivated crime going on. Now, do some people commit crimes under the uh, the appearance of a legitimate business? Of course, right? Bernie Madoff was a criminal. He was a criminal operating through a business. Yes, that does exist, but that is the exception. That is not the rule when it comes to capitalism. And, in fact, capitalism will squash entrepreneurs that steal from their customers because they won't get a lot of customers. You don't grow your business by stealing from them. You know, it, you, you, you grow your business by offering better services to your customers than your competitors. That's how you get bigger and bigger and bigger. And Bernie Madoff is out of business now, right? He's failed, right, because he was cheating his customers. Now, the question is, look, I think if the SEC and FINRA weren't there, I think he would have failed a lot sooner. I think the government bureaucracy ended up protecting him, perpetuating him, legitimizing him. I think because of the bureaucrats, there was less due diligence done in the private sector than would have been on the case had it been more of a caveat emptor environment, had people been more worried and had not uh, surrendered the due diligence to government regulators that basically did not do the job uh, of protecting the public. They did the job of protecting Bernie Madoff from the public and his clients, his investors were the losers. But again, there aren't, you know, the brokerage industry isn't full of Bernie Madoffs, right? There's, there's far more honest people. And that's true in every business. You're always going to get the guy that cuts corners and cheats his customers. And you know what? He doesn't go anywhere. How did Walmart become so successful? Did, did Walmart become so successful? Did, 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 uh, um, uh, uh, Sam Walton become the richest man in the world because he screwed his customers? No, he became the richest man in the world because he pleased his customers, because he gave his customers better selection of merchandise at lower prices. He succeeded uh, uh, in raising his own standard. Now, was, was Sam Walton motivated by some altruistic desire uh, to lower prices? No, he probably was motivated by his own desire to make money for himself. He said, how can I get really rich? And he figured out a way to get really rich, and a lot of people benefited. If he cut corners, if he decided, hey, I'm going to screw my customers, I'm going to give them shoddy merchandise, and I'm going to rip them off, how many Walmart stores would he have opened with that business model? Might he opened up a few? Yeah, sure, he might have opened up a few. He might have stole from some people. But would he would he have had the empire that was built? Of course not. It wouldn't be anywhere close. And, in fact, because he built up a brand that people trusted for a good shopping experience, probably a lot of other shysters who might have tried to start up a business failed. They couldn't compete with Walmart. They couldn't rip off their customers because competition from Walmart protected them. And that's what we need. Right. We need more greed, Michael Moore, not less greed. You know, maybe Michael Moore isn't making his films because he wants to make money. Maybe he's making his films because he simply wants to do good. Maybe the money is just the icing on Michael Moore's cake. I don't know. But there are plenty of filmmakers who are making entertaining movies because they want to make money for themselves. And of course, the directors, the writers, the actors, everybody who participates in the process of filmmaking uh, is trying to make a buck for themselves, right? They're, they're in it for themselves. They, they're greedy. But there's nothing wrong with that greed if it produces entertainment that somebody values and somebody is willing uh, to pay for. You know, and the fact that he feels fears greed, where Michael Moore needs to fear greed is when it's politicians. See, because politicians can do a lot of harm. See, politicians, they're just as greedy as anybody else. 
but they can use the power of government, the power of brute force to get rich at everybody else's expense. The entrepreneur gets rich by helping people. The government gets rich by hurting people. So that's what Michael Moore should be rallying against. Greed in government, not greed in the private sector. Anyway, we'll be back. This is Peter Schiff on SchiffRadio.com.